Hey everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking, where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather and welcome to recipe 11 in the 12 cookies of Christmas. We only have two recipes left before Christmas is here, so I thought I would do a very nostalgic one for me. This is my great grandmother's recipe of butterscotch wheat germ cookies. Now, this cookie is full of warm spices, full of butterscotch and has some applesauce thrown in there and they're like cake. I haven't had them in almost 30 years, but the memory of them is so joyous to me that I thought this would be a great cookie to honor my late great grandmother and to put in my belly. So if you're ready for this adventure, let's get started. All right, you guys, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get our oven preheating to 350. Next, we are gonna get all of our butter in the bowl and we're gonna give it a quick mix with our hand mixer. And then we're gonna add in our sugar. And we're gonna cream this until well combined. All right, next I'm going to add my egg and my applesauce. Now this is unsweetened applesauce. You could use the pre-sweetened kind or even the um, one with cinnamon in it. Um, it'll change the taste of the cookie just a little bit. You might wanna adjust your cinnamon and your other spices, but it's probably light enough that it'll probably be fine. So now we're gonna mix this until it's well combined. Now, because of the nature of applesauce, your mixture is gonna look curdled. Don't panic, that's normal. We're gonna set it off to the side for a moment and combine our dry ingredients. So we have our flour, our wheat germ, and all of our spices. So literally all of the warm spices, our baking soda, our cloves, our nutmeg, our allspice, and our cinnamon. And we're just gonna kind of give that a good mix. Oh, already? The smell of this with the wheat germ and the butterscotch. I'm getting all the feels, all the feels, you guys. And then a little bit at a time, we're gonna combine this into our mixture. On low. And we're gonna mix until it's just combined and then we're gonna switch to a spoon. Okay, that's good. We don't wanna overmix it. We want it to stay nice and light and fluffy. So I'm gonna to switch to my spatula. I'm going to scrape my edges so we get all that flour. I feel like that's not enough flour, mom. Hold on. All right, and next we're gonna add as much chips as you want. Now this is an entire bag of butterscotch chips and we say that you have to measure with your heart. So just mix them in and then see what you think and then keep mixing until you're happy with it. Judgment free zone. And there we have it. The cookies are ready to go on our baking tray. Now, this is a very wet batter. Like I mentioned, it's very cake-like. So don't be frightened if this is not like a cookie dough batter. That's okay, apparently. So we're just going to get some rounded teaspoons and we're gonna thunk them down right there. We're not gonna touch them. We're not gonna round them off. We're just gonna put them down quite naturally, just like that. Now, the me of the baking world says I should probably refrigerate this dough, but the directions did not say to refrigerate the dough. In fact, it said nothing. It said drop them on the tray and get them in the oven. So that is what I'm going to do. So into the oven, these are gonna go. I feel like they need to be bigger than that too, but our first test is fine. We'll, we'll do our first test with them kind of smallish because maybe, I can't remember, my, the little kid brain in me says there were huge cookies, but maybe that was just because I was a little kid. But they look gorgeous and they're gonna go into the 350 oven for 15 minutes. All right, you guys, we gotta adjust something. I know my grandmother's not here to tell me what went wrong, but I'm, I'm gonna guess a couple things. First of all, um, this is what they look like when they got out. They kind of look like Florentines. They flattened out a whole bunch 
Um, they're still edible, but they're way too soft to even get off the pan. Now I had stuck another pan into the oven before I knew this was the case. And um, they're not as flat, but they're still pretty flat. These ones I can actually get off of the, um, the baking sheet and, and they'll probably be just fine and it'll be fine. I did stick a tray in just now um, after it was in the refrigerator for 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm gonna see how those ones turn out, but I'm also going to mix some more flour into my remaining batter. So this is one fourth of the cookies and the rest of the three fourths of the cookies are already baking and or baked. So I'm gonna add probably one fourth of a cup of more flour to this batter. That way, if this works and they work a little better, then I know that it actually needs to be upped and say two and a half cups of flour, not just one and one half cups of flour. And a quick peek in the oven. Having chilled them, they look a lot better, but they're not the same as when they were at my grandma's house. So we're gonna try mixing in another little bit of flour. So I did it, I did it a full fourth of a cup because if anything, that was the part that was written wrong, um, the flour bit instead of any of the other bits. That's just my thought. I did go ahead and read through her recipe again um, just to make sure I didn't mix anything up but I have a feeling that there was just some uh, flour mi missing from the original recipe. But that looks like a pretty tight dough. Um, I have good thoughts on that. So what I will do is I will do, we'll do like three additional of these cookies. Oh yeah, they're even setting up a little better. We'll do three additional cookies, maybe four not refrigerated, and then I'll get three on another pan and put it in the refrigerator and we'll see the difference. I'll be back. This, it, nope, just kidding. This is the pan of cookies that um, I added the extra flour to. These are absolutely perfect. These are exactly what Grandma Ida's wheat germ cookies should look like. They are nice and cake-like and they are not flat at all. Definitely, I'm gonna make sure the recipe has the extra flour. When you refrigerate the dough, nothing, there's no substantial change except for this one here has much browner of edges while this one here, its edges stayed kind of a little more pale. Still brown, but not as dark as this one. I think that I prefer, like both of them look great on the bottom, but as you can see, one of them did get a little bit darker. This was the one that was not refrigerated beforehand. So I would say 100%, you need that extra cup of flour in your batter, period. You just need that. And refrigerate your cookie dough before you put it in the oven. I did refrigerate on the pan too, so maybe I will make the notes. Refrigerate, like portion onto your baking tray, but then put the whole baking tray in your refrigerator if you have room. If you don't have room, it will probably be fine if you just refrigerated the cookie dough for a little bit longer than 15 minutes, but all it took was about 15 minutes in the oven and we got a better cook on these cookies. And look at them, they're absolutely fantastic. These are my grandmother's butterscotch wheat germ cookies. Let's break into them. Soft and very cake-like. Do you see that gorgeousness? If you like cake cookies, this is a great cookie. All right, now we're gonna try it. Will it measure up to my grandmother's cookie? I'm sure it will, right? Hmm. Yep. That's it. That is it. Oh, I'm getting a little emotional. No, really. <laughs> I might have to take a minute. <laughs> Whoo! So my grandma Ida is a very, very special person in our lives. Um, and so this cookie means a lot to me and it means a lot that I figured it out. I was really kind of bummed that they didn't work at the beginning, um, but now I'm super excited that they certainly look fantastic. And this is my grandmother's cookie. 
It's so good. Mmm. The applesauce gives it a little hint of that kind of autumn slash winter um, flavor with all of those warm spices. And then the butterscotch. Mm. I'm not even, I'm not even a butterscotch lover. In fact, there is seldom a cookie that I like butterscotch in, but these guys, these are absolutely fantastic. And they make me feel so warm and fuzzy. <laughs> Let's start crying again. All right, you guys, well, if you enjoyed that video, give it a like, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. We're doing the 12 cookies of Christmas right now. So if you missed any of the last 11 cookies, well, probably not the 11th, the 10, because today is the 11th, go check those out because tomorrow I'm gonna be posting the final cookie of our 12 cookies of Christmas. I'm excited. My whole family's excited because they're actually kind of over cookies. I have been giving cookies away by the dozens this Christmas. Like someone shows up at my door and I'm like, here you go. Here's some cookies. All of them have been getting rave reviews, by the way. Everyone has loved every one of the cookies. So I'll be glad to wrap the 12 cookies of Christmas up, but tomorrow's cookie, the 12th recipe, you're gonna love it. I'm just saying, and you're gonna wanna make it before Christmas. So be glad that you have a day to collect your ingredients and make it for Christmas. All right, you guys, we will see you on the next adventure. Bye.